All right, guys. This is it, man. We're about to see what an extra three months can bring us. We've got 12.9 million eggplants that, yes, the red subclass will be revealed to us today. Right, here we go, fellas. Here we go. Hey, everyone. This is Luke from the Destiny team. The final shape is the culmination of a 10-year journey. A journey that began on the Cosmodrome, took you to the Moon, Venus, Mars, the Reef, and beyond. It's a journey that'll end inside the Traveler with you facing the Witness. But facing the Witness is not the end of Destiny 2. And it's definitely not the end of Destiny. After you face the Witness, we're gonna tell you what's coming next to Destiny 2 and beyond. We'll see you soon. Dude, Luke is still around? The Final Shape has been an amazing project to work on. The amount of creativity, the amount of design work, the amount of all these elements coming together has been inspirational. I was like, are you guys, are you guys seeing this? Are you guys seeing this? It looks awesome. I think that we're gonna have a pretty big impact and it's gonna shake things up a lot. And we just wanted to give you a glimpse of what we're working on. I see three different subclasses right now, guys. Look at the bottom left. Space is grand solar. What is happening? Four subclasses. We are going into the pale heart of the Traveler, and the Traveler has chosen you, the Guardian, to be its champion. It's empowering us with gifts that we've never really had before. One of the concept artists early on created this very evocative image of a Guardian with light armor and dark armor. We're like, we really need this in the final shape. This is the ultimate form of being a Guardian, to build light and darkness at the same time. Oh my God. We build God. Prismatic exactly to be that. Prismatic is the new subclass in the final shape where you can combine certain class abilities from different damage types together. Getting light and dark and mastering it. No one's done that before. Like the witness is manipulating the energies like this, but the witness is not a master of light and dark. You are, the guardian is, players are. In Prismatic, underneath your super bar, there's a light meter and a dark meter. As you deal damage with either light damage or dark damage, it fills the respective sides of the meter. Once both sides are full, you get this new level of power that we're calling Transcendence. I love Transcendence because you do these cool motions. For Warlocks, we have this cool like mystic pose. Hunters are gonna do this cool like. The Titan when we just go. While you're transcendent, you get a new, unique grenade that combines both light and dark together. The hunters get this fire and ice oh! combo. Titans, strand, and arc. For the warlock, stasis, and void together. Dude, this is crazy! You have a weapon damage bonus that stacks on top of other weapon damage bonuses. Your grenade and melee are both instantly refunded when you cast transcendence, so you can loop them together, one after the other. <laughs> That's really exciting. That is so good. <laughs> We're kind of thinking about Prismatic as this advanced subclass where you have more build crafting options, more potential combinations, more fragments than you normally get, more fragment slots to socket them than you normally get. That is a lot of combinations. 2,300, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm just the art director. <laughs> I think that Prismatic feels like you are doing combinations you shouldn't be able to do. It feels a little game-breaking, I'm not gonna lie. A, a little, a little bit?
you're gonna be like, oh no, what have I done? I'm gonna be here all night. Dude, we're never gonna use anything but this subclass. just about the mastery of light and dark. It's not just about using multiple powers at the same time. It's about figuring out how they work in concert in really interesting ways. We're transcending kind of the, the bounds of light and darkness. There's all these subclasses that really resonate with people. And now you can finally combine those and make your own guardian feel very uniquely you. This like really opens up the doors for unexpected, like really wild stuff. I love um, being a hunter and having gunpowder gamble and blowing them up. And then we're like, oh, wait, 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 what if you could slow enemies? You could throw out, you know, your shurikens and then you blow them up as well. Oh and it's like, okay. my God. I didn't think I could ever do those two things at the same time. And you're telling me I can do as much as I want? You can throw a withering blade melee and like bounce it between a bunch of people and get like three kills from one melee and now your gunpowder gambles like fully oh charged. Oh my right? God, And so like nuts. certain interactions I think get a lot easier <laughs> just because we've sort of made the aspects a little bit, a little bit more permissive, a little bit, a little bit looser. So I think when we play test, I'm probably gonna be running probably Warlock with um, this, the Lightning Surge build where you have Arcane Needle for three melee charges. And then you combine that with lightning oh surge. God. You can throw bleak watcher on top of that for just like a little extra crowd aspect, control, or with, you can throw it with the power. Melee. And so you're, you know, jumping in, lightning surging. That's killing a bunch of stuff. You're activating devour. That gives you infinite you see sustain going back and forth, guys, to stay in the fight. And goes As back a to titan, arc. you can just quickly start using your arc abilities to jolt all the enemies around you, and then kind of finish them off with like the cool blades of Strand, and it's so satisfying to see how fast you move. It's a very like fun, destructive build that you can just like destroy everything around you, and it, it, it's super fun. There was this moment for me where I was like, wait a minute, I could send out Threadlings and have a Bleak Watcher. It just creates these moments of oh! escalation within the combat, and I think that's really exciting for me. If you combine Bleak Watcher and Feed the Void, you consume your grenade to throw your Bleak Watcher out there. And so it's, you know, locking stuff down with stasis, doing crowd control. You can clean that stuff up pretty easily with, you know, an arcane needle melee, which has three charges. Those ability kills will activate Devour, which gives you more grenade energy every time Devour activates. So lets you loop your Bleak Watcher. And so you can have like multiple Bleak Watchers out in the field, freezing stuff everywhere. You're just like launching your cool strand melees out and everything's dying and it's great. <laughs> The game is going to have to get progressively harder in the final game. Embracing no the way. challenge of like, how do we make stuff that wasn't initially intended to like work together in the same build? Like, how do we twist them and warp them and push and pull this and that to make them work together? I'm excited about, you know, seeing uh, all the players like talk about their favorite combinations. I'm just looking forward to all the, the videos that people make of their own custom builds with their own exotics that they're pairing it up with to create like this, these amazing builds. It feels infinite to me. Uh, and I'm, I'm really excited about that. shape, we're going to be making these new exotic class items. These new exotic class items allow you to 
steal perks from other exotics and combine two perks together into one single exotic. The perks that come on them are actually random rolled. One thing that is gonna be fun is to chase these perks and then find different combinations that work really well. Yeah. These new class items are all yeah. about prismatic and making that feel good. So it's gonna be all about enhancing your builds and your combination of light and darkness and achieving transcendence and what transcendence does. They also look so good. With these class items, we wanted them to stand out as special. They have these two perk columns that take aspects from other exotics. Exotic class items are going to let you do things that other classes consider their own, but now they're yours. I managed to get, for my slow them down, blow them up hunter build, a roll on the exotic cloak that made it so powered melee kills caused enemies to ignite. And also, I could get an extra dodge charge, so I could do an extra slow charge on enemies at the same time. We want it to feel a little broken. It's like a it definitely felt like I had two exotics on my cloak, which is kind of the intention. We want that to feel like you're bending the rules a bit. <laughs> it just opens up the space for mix and broken. matching in a way that I think is going to just be fun to see what combinations people find and like and what becomes the meta. They look amazing. They have visual effects that activate when you are transcendent. It just really ties into this overall theme. But on top of that, the gameplay with basically stealing exotic traits from other exotics, and even from classes that aren't you, adds this element of spice to them. And the fact that it's random rolls, you're going to want to keep looking for the right one for your builds. Entirely new enemy type we're up against, brother. It's not just subjugates. We're up against entirely new enemy types as well. There's the new Sun Singer Super right next to the new Shoulder Super right there. Yeah, there it the is. The Dread are this new witness faction. When you see these new characters, not only do they look unique and new, but you see like a through line that we've been building through the years that connects it all together. And you've seen a member of the Dread before. You might remember seeing the Tormentor make a big appearance last year. Well, that was just the first one. You have like this slate of new enemies with like the Tormentor and the Subjugators and the Weaver and the Attendant and the Grim and the Husk. This is like the embodiment of the witness in these new enemies. The Grim is probably one of my favorite new enemies that we have in Destiny. I think it's a poster child of the Dread in some ways. It's this bat with a gun. The gun bat, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it does a scream and it swoops all around the battlefield. It's a profile we've never seen in Destiny. You are facing now the first flying character with actual wings. They can screech, and if that hits you, it suppresses your abilities. Wow. It also slows you down. Oh, it yeah, immediately appealed to the team and made us think, we have to do this. We have to make this character. The Husk is this melee bruiser who has these incredibly dangerous looking blades and they're going to do these cool acrobatic attacks. 
they hurt. They have two of these very sharp melee weapons, and they just come charging with those things and will just slice and dice. They are really dangerous, pretty thick especially in groups. Right if you manage to kill the husk, get to be careful, because if you kill it the wrong way, what's inside of the husk? The geist is going to pop out and it's going to seek you out. It almost looks like a worm. A geist has killed me more than I care to admit. Now I'm like looking everywhere every time I go into a fight and I'm like, is there a husk somewhere? Is there a husk somewhere? Because I'm targeting that first. <laughs> the weaver and the attendant are our strand and stasis scions that have been reshaped by the witness. We wanted to show like the influence of darkness powers on these characters. They have a stasis ability that can shoot at you, that will freeze you. They have a strand ability that will pull you across the battlefield. The fact that you can get suspended and frozen in place just adds a big new dynamic to the fight. The Weaver does something we've never done before. It'll shoot out this complete, powerful strand wave. If that thing hits you, it's almost like a rubber band. Yeah. It like pulls back. <laughs> and like snaps and that like pulls you towards that character. As one character doing that to you, yeah, you can handle it. Probably as soon as there's it. multiple characters trying to pull you in different directions towards you, you have to approach it in a different way. We're really excited about everything that we've been doing for the final shape. It just feels like there's a really cool through line through all of this. It's the culmination of the Guardian's journey over the last 10 years. We wanted to deliver something that's really like fun and exciting and engaging for players. It is amazing to see this initial inspiration carried all the way through to become a reality in the final shape. into the Traveler to turn their threat into our annihilation. Something's changed in the Guardian. New That's power. Pro. I can feel it. Look at that. Dude! Dude! It makes so much sense, though. Take this power, Guardian. Be brave in dark places. For we are the light of hope. Ran all the different combinations. Oh, you get an exotic exotic ship? That's a Burman? Wow. All right, hold on, we're still on, we're, we're, now we got into the lights. Oh my God, dude, I'm just trying to dissect everything we just saw right there. As the final shape approaches, and the forces of the witness surge at the borders of the city, Lord Shax has been authorized by the Vanguard to place an arsenal of banned weapons from his personal collection back into circulation. Powerful gear for a powerful guardian. Good luck. Careful with that. Weapons Some of the best in class the weapons, guys. We now see his desperate measures. I know you'll use this well. 
Fight well. Pushing back buys us only time, but the alternative is unthinkable. I can't wait to see what you do with that. Magnificent. Nice. Whisper mission also launches today, guys. It's time, Guardian. Crush them. Let them come. I'll break a mark now. So if the enemies of humanity want war, let's give them war. Looks good, man. Looks good. Getting creative. I love there to it see is. it. All right, is that it? Oh, shit. I say that's it. Is that it? Like, as if we just, just didn't get dropped with an absolute bomb of a stream today. Holy hell, guys. We had a bet in this stream of whether or not we were going to see a new subclass. And we went way beyond any of that. Guys. This is Destiny 3. Like, for real. The fact that we're getting class, exotic class items and we can merge aspects from different exotics that have a combo effect. The fact that we're now going to be able to take get multiple subclasses and just merge them all into one under this new subclass. This isn't a new subclass. Brother, it's new. This shit is beyond, this shit is beyond anything we could have ever expected. This is way beyond just a red subclass. If it had been like a, hey, here's a SIVA subclass, a red subclass, I would have been very much hyped. But this goes way beyond any of that. And on top of that, you saw, you saw abilities behaving differently. When some of the abilities were turning pink and other things, it was acting way beyond what we are, are used to seeing in our current setup. I, I think many of us were convinced we were just going to see subjugators, but we've blown way past that. And look, 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 something tells me that somehow, some way, Bungie did in fact do this in the past three months. Because you, dude, there's no way they they wouldn't have shown this. Imagine they shown this last year during the Vida. It would be completely. The pre-orders would be blowing up, and I guarantee you, pre-orders are gonna blow the fuck up. Everybody right now is breaking out the damn credit card. This is something Bungie literally back up against the wall are making this happen within three months. It's fucking wild. Now, if the narrative, if the narrative is really good too, which looking to be. This may actually be the best expansion ever. Slap that like button like your mama told you right.